Hey guys, I'm Ashley and as you can see we're outside on this beautiful summer hot day and today we're going to be taking a look at the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1 3D printer that's out on the market. So let's check it out on Chip Builds. This printer was really easy to assemble. Literally, it came in the base all together and this part all together, the gantry. And all I had to do was just kind of slide it down in there, tighten two screws and connect these ribbon tape cables and that was it and I was ready to go. So it's definitely a plug and play machine, which is what I really like and I thought was awesome. Now this printer honestly would be very great for beginners because of the ease of use. So some of the things that you should definitely have if you're gonna get this printer is a spatula of some kind to really pry up those prints. And you're definitely gonna want some gaffer's tape. Uh, you know, these ribbon cables are taped up really well and really nicely. But uh, if you do have to replace it, you have to remove the tape that comes with it. So if you just have some gaffer's tape around, it's a real easy fix. And I've even used some gaffer's tape to tape down some of the wires that are back here just so that the bed has a lot of clearance and nothing's going to get caught or pinched. So I would definitely recommend getting this. And uh, Artillery does include an awesome little tool bag of things to help get you going and just any kind of issues that you might have, Allen wrenches and stuff like that. So really, there's not much more that you'll need with this printer, but I definitely suggest this little spatula or a razor blade and gaffer's tape for sure. So I was really excited when I saw this printer come out on the market. I knew that the size was what I wanted because one of the main things I wanted to do with 3D printing was make props. I'm super nerdy and geeky and superheroes love all that stuff. And so I was so excited that this massive build volume and for the relative easy price, uh, it was just exactly what I wanted. So I bought it and I thought I would test it out and let you guys know how it went. Now this printer has a build size of 300 millimeters square by 400 millimeters tall on the Z axis. And it's been really awesome so far. I've really been trying to scale a lot of prints bigger to see how it goes. And this vase that I made for my grandmother is just under a foot tall and she loved it and it's really great and it holds water you can see there's water in there and it handled that no problem one of the main things i like about this printer are the dual z axis rods that are going it really helps strengthen the machine and makes it a lot sturdier my previous printer only had the one and you could tell it really suffered in print quality and just accuracy so the nice thing about this with the dual z rods you have this awesome belt connecting them at the top so they're never going to go out of square and they're always going to move together now the stock settings for this printer are 100 millimeters a second and I just think that's a little too fast and jerky so I did slow it down a bit to about 60 millimeters a second and I've been having some flawless prints. Also it has this really cool LED that's attached to it so it makes printing at night look extra awesome. Now this is the version 3 of this machine that's been out. Artillery 3D has been really great at taking in customer feedback and implementing the changes into the new versions that are coming out. This cost me $400 and honestly I am so excited for the results that I've had for that price point and honestly this is definitely a CR10 killer. Another feature that I really love on this printer are these awesome ribbon cables that they're using for the X and Y and Z axes. Uh, it's just really great. I have had no issues with them, uh, you know, stripping or getting knotted or anything like that. The only thing I did have to replace the ribbon cable here um, just because I was getting some clicking in the direct drive extruder and that was honestly, I think there just wasn't enough slack and so I probably didn't need to replace the whole ribbon. I probably could have just undid it and read it and it would have been fine. But just in case I had replaced it, it came with replacement ribbon cables and it was just an amazing experience that it was so easy to switch something out like that and I was printing again in just a few minutes. Now this printer does use either a micro SD card or a USB stick and honestly I love the USB stick. That's all I've been using. Micro SDs, you know, they are really nice but they're very small and it's hard to grip and get it in there. So I love the USB and that's what I've been primarily using for this machine. In the version 3, it does have all these uh, aluminum parts that in previous versions were 3D printed. So the aluminum parts is a nice upgrade to this. And it just makes the machine look very nice and just that much more professional and that much better. Up top, we have the filament holder. And it's just these two things that you screw into the back here. And it has the filament runout detector, which is all right. I've been using it every time, but I really will never have that issue because I'm 
typically only printing when I am in the house. And so I think what I'm gonna do is just gonna cut a little piece of filament and just keep it in there permanently. I have tried to print it without it and it just constantly beeps and it won't let me continue to go. So I think that's one of the negative things about this printer. These two halves that are holding the filament are fine, but I do have different size roll spool. If you only have one spool size and that's all you're ever gonna use, that's fine. But I have so many different ones. I think I am gonna 3D print something that will just make it a little bit easier rather than having to unscrew these screws and adjust them with every time I'm using a different size filament roll. One of the great things about this printer too that I personally absolutely love is it is so quiet when it's running. I'm constantly looking over my shoulder checking to make sure that this thing is actually printing because you can't even hear it going. Because typically when you're making props they take a really long time to do and sometimes I have to have the printer running while I'm sleeping and I keep it in my room. So it's really nice to actually be able to sleep unlike my other printer that I had which was just so loud. So this really quiet machine has been really awesome and I just love it. So one of the complaints I do have this machine is that the glass bed works way too well. I've had so many issues with prints sticking to the bottom, almost welding, that it's been a struggle to get some of them off. And I've almost ruined a couple prints trying to pry it off. And my bed has been perfectly level. I level this thing all the time and always double checking that it is level and where it needs to be. And so part of the issue was my first layer height. I did have to bump that up to about 140% and even still it is still getting stuck and a little bit hard i do have to use this little uh, spatula here and kind of hit it a few times to break up one of the corners and then it will just come off but over time as i print with it i do think it's going to be easier to pull the prints off and i still have to do a little bit of adjusting the first layer height but i think honestly it's kind of i can't really push it much more but other than that this thing is really great and i just i love it so this printer has a feature that I haven't used yet, and it's when the power goes out or if the printer loses power at all, it can resume printing again. I've seen some other people do tests with it and it hasn't been very accurate of resuming the print from where it left off. And obviously, if it does lose power, things are starting to cool so things can e easily shift in the print. And so I just haven't tried that out and I wouldn't necessarily bank on a feature like that for printing anyways. And that's just one of the cons of this printer. Um, so I haven't really had a chance to check it out, but I'm sure other people have done a really great job with it. So if that is something you're looking for in a 3D printer, then this does have it. Now all of these test prints have been printed on the stock 0.4 nozzle, and I haven't done any modifications to this printer. It's just been as is running stock, and honestly, it's just been great. I've been able to make a bunch of different little planters for my family. This one was for my mom, she absolutely loved it. And just, you know, some different knickknacks and stuff like that. And all the files for these test prints will be listed in the description. Um, I made these really awesome cosplay calipers from Uncle Jesse. We can, you know, you could just kind of figure out the size of your head and everything. I'm not entirely sure how to use these, but I think it's kind of cool. So that was just really awesome. So I was really utilizing the big build plate of this printer and it really worked out for me. Then we got some pool toys or a bath toy little boat. This was a, a smaller model I found on Thingiverse and I scaled it up. And then we got, you know, some flexi toys going. And then we got some adapters for these little wireless candles to make some Harry Potter floating candles that will be coming out soon. And it's just, it's been really awesome. The quality of these prints are really great you know and then some props just testing different things different settings on how these props are turning out you know and honestly the possibilities are just endless with this size we got some wands you know good old lightsaber Darth Vader headphone holders you know calibration cats but this printer honestly is just amazing and I've loved the every second of it I honestly would recommend this absolutely and this is just my own opinion not affiliated with them whatsoever I love this machine and at $400, it's a really great entry point for 3D printing. You can spend, you know, $200 on like an Ender 3, but then you're gonna put a couple hundred dollars into upgrades to make it just work how you want it to work anyways. So why not start with a machine that's $400 and has just this massive build area, you know, and it's just, it's mostly plug and play and it's just really great. I highly recommend this to anyone trying to start out in 3D printing or if you're a prop maker, this is gonna help you out a lot. 
Thank you so much guys for watching this review. Um, I'm gonna have a bunch of other videos coming out with this printer specifically because I love it that much. Uh, if you have any questions or if you like this video or didn't like it, let me know down in the comments. And if you did like it, please consider hitting the like button or subscribing to my channel. That would really help me out.